Hello and welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modeler. My name's Ian. This is my kitchen table where do we modeler. So, um, a different uh, different video from video reviews. Um, I thought I would put together a little bit of a video series on how I go about painting armour models. Um, I do a lot of aircraft, but I also like to do quite a lot of armour. And I use similar techniques for painting armour as I do aircraft. Um, the reason I've decided to do this video is because of this particular build here, which is Tiger Models uh, Nag Mahon, um, early doghouse. Um, I, I posted up some photos on some of the modeling forums and I, uh, I got quite a lot of positive feedback back about it and quite a lot of questions about how I managed to get the tonal variation, the shading and general weathering of the model. Uh, so I thought, well, why not put a video together and actually show everyone, that, well, anyone that's interested in how I do it. So uh, the kit in question I'm going to do it on, you can see over my shoulder, is Hobby Boss's 135 Nag Mahon, and it's the early version without the, the doghouse on the top. And I've taken the liberty uh, to prepare it here already. Now, I hear some of you asking, saying, why, why didn't I film a build? Um, purely because I, I wanted to focus on painting rather than building. Um, I'm going to focus on building um, in the next video segment I'm going to do. Um, so I want to focus on the painting side, this side, and, and focus on how I take a model that's made and complete uh, and, and break it down and, and, and get it ready for paint and then how I actually paint it. So let's get the camera off me because I'm obviously waffling now. Let's get it down on the workbench and we'll see how the model comes apart and how I get all the parts ready um, and, and prepared for putting down the, the undercoat. And we'll also look at what airbrush I'm going to use for doing the base coats and what paints I'm going to use and a little explanation of why I use those particular paints. So let's stop talking, let's get the camera down and see what we're doing. Right, so we're down on the kitchen table. Um, so let's have a quick discussion of what airbrushes we're going to use, what paints we're going to use, and a quick reasoning as to why we're going to use them. And then we'll look at how we're going to take the, the model apart, getting ready for paint. So uh, if we start with paints, in the interest of keeping this easy and using paints that I think everyone or most folks should be able to get access to, whether in your local shop or online, I'm going to be using Tamiya XF paints as well as uh, Mr. Hobby Aquas color. You can use a Tamiya color of the similar color, it's just that this is the, the paint, the color I was wanting for, for the base coat. So, if we look at, if we look at the, uh, the Tiger models, if I just get that in focus, there we go. We can see that there is, if I get a pointer, let's see a bit better. We can see that we've obviously got highlights here on the top where there's lots of sun bleaching and, and sunlight getting. And then if we look at the side armour to the camera, then we've got highlights and we've also got low lights or shading. And if we look at the side armour plate, we can see again we've got highlights along the top streaking down with shading. And then that's enhanced with oil work and pigment work. Um, the similar goes underneath in the running gear, although it's not as prevalent. Uh, we've also got a similar pattern of highlights leading to shading and low lights on the rear armor plate. Uh, this theme is followed through on the rear deck, where you see we've got highlights in the high traffic areas and low lights and shading in the grills and gratings, as well as on the frontal armor. Move that around. So you can see we've got highlights at the top of the armor plates leading down to low, the low light shading. Um, and same goes here to create this overall appearance of a weathered, sun bleached, kind of sort of combat experienced vehicle. Uh, now, I achieve this highlight low light finish by using pretty much one color with minimal 
uh, lightning and darkening. And I do that because I paint over a dark base colour. I don't use black um, unless I really want a dark finish. I'll try and use a colour that I want to leave a little bit of hint of shade in there, but a bit more variation than black. Now what I've used for that model was RLM 70 black green. So if you can see from that, oh excuse me, the compressor's just kicked in. So I don't know if you can see for that, but that is a nice dark shade of green and it is really dark green. So that's going to be our base coat. And then the top coat, this is some left over from this build here, is a homemade mix of IDF Sinai Grey. And it's the circa 1982 colour. Now, a really, really good mix for this colour, and it's a very close match to the real thing, is a simple 50-50 mix of Tamiya's XF20 medium grey and XF49 khaki. That's it. No three or four different colours together. It's just a simple mix of grey and khaki. Same ratios. All I did was take an empty Tamiya uh, paint jar and I put in half of the grey and half of the khaki and then topped it up with thinners. So it was probably one part grey, one part khaki, one part thinners. So 50-50 paint and then thin the paint again. And that gets you to a really good smooth consistency of paint that will go through most airbrushes. Now, moving on to the airbrushes. What I usually like to use, or don't usually, I do all the time, I use a Mr. Hobby Creos PS290 for my base coats and any flat coats or gloss coats. It's got a 0.5 needle in it and sometimes I use the fan cap but 9 times out of 10 I'll just use the standard round nozzle and the round spray pattern. It's got a large spray cup so I can put a lot of paint in or varnishes if I want um, and it will work. I usually spray uh, around about 15 to 20 psi with this airbrush. Now when it comes to putting down the the top coat of the paint I really really like an airbrush that's made by Harder and Steenbeck but it's actually a Hansa airbrush so this is a Hansa Hansa 381 it's a double action airbrush except unlike most double action airbrushes where you push down and then pull back with this airbrush you just pull back on the trigger and as you pull back that gives you air and as you keep pulling back then that gives you paint so it's one movement to give you air and paint and depending on how much you pull back will depend on how much air and paint you get they're really really controllable and they're really really easy to learn and they're reasonably priced i think if you're buying them new they're about 120 pounds but they're made by harder and steenbeck um, and they're actually a hansa 381 this is the said the three the, the point three oh millimeter needle you can get the 281 if you want some really detailed work and that's got the 0.2 millimeter needle so for this build i'm just going to be using the the creos to put down the shading coat and then the, or the primer coat and then i'm going to be using the 381 to put down all the top coat so now we've got the paints and we've got the airbrushes covered we need to look at how we're going to take the model apart. So you can see here on the bench we've got the main hull of the tank, we've got things like stretches that are already loose, there's a couple of jerry cans in there. I've already left off, I've constructed but left off the front side armour plates and the rear side armour plates. We start taking it apart, we can pull off the top armour plate from the structure. You'll note that I haven't made any of the machine guns. We'll do that separately at the end. Now, the rest of this does come apart. The tracks are individual links glued together. I'm not too worried about whether I can get them on and off or not. But the wheels will pop off. Throw them on the floor. They're a bit stiff, but they will come off. And 
that's the part of the wheels coming off. You can see there the actual rubber comes off the wheels themselves. So they all come off. You try and do this gently as you can. Sometimes they're a bit stiff. There we go. Just a little wiggle. They come off. It's kind of difficult doing it for the camera as well. There we go. Get the tire off. And off we come. There's the wheel off. Now, that then gives us access to paint all this track. We can paint all the running gear. Um, and if there was more room, I probably could have popped off the whole track run itself, but because it's it's caught in to the return rollers, I can't. But it's no problem. I don't I don't need to worry about that. What we need to do, and there's flexibility enough for the track, we can set it down, it shouldn't break the track. Or we can put something underneath and hold it, but either way, we've got access to paint all the running gear and we can paint the track all in situ. We don't have to worry about taking it off. So let's just take a quick break for two seconds. I'll stop the camera. I'll finish taking the other side of the running gear apart and then I'll show you how I set it all up for painting. Okay, so I've gotten all the running gear off, started putting it on sticks and I, I worked on the other side um, and I managed to get the track off so I thought I'd film it just to show you. So unfortunately this one split, it's not a huge problem because I can just glue it back together. But what I figured out was if I just gently put my thumb against this return roller here, so I'll try and film that, get my hands in the way. So I push the track up to the top guard and then gently ease the, the roll away. Oh, I've broken that one, so I'll have to repair that. Try again on this one. Just gently ease it away. There's enough space just to pop the track from around it. So we'll do it again to this one. So push the track up to the top and then ease it away. And there we go. The track's off. So I'll quickly glue that together and I'll quickly glue that return roller back on. And then I'll finish setting everything up and we can come back and get some paint down. Okay, so we are fully dismantled and we've broken it down into the base um, sub-assemblies we're needing to get paint on the go. So what are we going to paint first? Well, obviously we need to get the running gear painted first. We need to get painted all underneath here. All the wheels need painting. Now I've just used some ordinary bamboo skewers. Um, you can pick them up anywhere, those are from a local supermarket. And I've just cut them down to size. You probably see, you can see by paint that these have been used before for doing wheels, but they're just stuck on the wheels. It's a piece of old insulation foam and both sides are stuck in, ready to paint. So they're great because you can pick them up, spin them in the hands, you can get all the, all the back and front done in one go and then put them straight back into the holder so we've got the wheels there the tracks are here they can just get sprayed holding them with a glove um, i'd say you'd need to remember what's left and right but actually it doesn't matter too much because there's no difference in length of running gear and the drive sprocket and idler wheel are the same size so it as so long as the tracks are running in the right direction when you put them back on it doesn't matter if they're left or right you could mark them up on the top here with an L and R, scribe it in. I might have done that before, but I'm not just too fussed because I know I'll get them on. Um, right, we've also got sundry, so what I've got here is a, a Tamiya painting turntable. Um, I was actually given this by my uh, sister-in-law because she knew I really liked doing models and um, she gave it to me, but they're, they're easy enough to pick up off eBay. Now, because I want to paint the underside of the running gear first, then I've actually stuck just a cut down bamboo um, skewer with a piece of um, Yoohoo white tack. We're stuck on the outside so we can paint the inside. And the, the whole idea behind this process of doing all the inside stuff first is so that we can paint up all the running gear and then we can go ahead and assemble the running gear back onto the tank, painted, shaded, ready for weathering. We won't be painting, not knocking the camera, we won't be painting the top of the tank just yet. We'll get it all assembled back together, get all the side armor on. So we are, we're looking like this here. We'll get all this on 
and then we can just put a simple mask behind all this and then we can paint the top of the tank and that will mean that all the glue joints to get the armour on um, are going to be good and solid and they won't fall apart and it'll also make it quicker and easier to paint if we do it this way. So, there we are. The plastic road wheels, which actually makes painting the road wheels even easier, what I'll do is I'll just paint them individually by hand using the paint. I'll probably use something like um, anthracite grey or rubber black. I don't know what I've got in my paint box, but I'll find something. And basically I'll just have a glove on and I'll stick the road wheel on the end of my finger and just quickly spray away at it. If I really was adventurous, I'd probably stick four on one on each finger and spray that way to get it done quicker. But um, let's get the airbrush set up with the primer and we'll get a primer coat on all this and take it from there. Right, so I have loaded up the colour in the colour cup. Now a quick tip for anyone whose paint pot is sea solid. Um, and you kind of get a grip on it, then a rubber band wrapped around the paint pot a few times and then you've got a grip to twist the lid, lid off and get to the paint inside. So sometimes these paints can get quite stuck. So this is the uh, Mr. Hobby Aquas colour, uh, H65, which is RLM 70 black green. And it is really quite a nice uh, deep green colour. So I've thinned it just ever so slightly with Tanya X20A. We've got maybe a quarter of a colour cup there. I'm going to prime all the areas um, where for the running gear so we can then move on and get um, the running gear put together and then move to the upper surfaces. So it's all been cleaned. Uh, quick wipe down with uh, Tamiya X20A or isopropyl alcohol and a tea towel. Make sure you remove all the you know, finger marks, oil, release oil, uh, release agent or whatever. Uh, we're looking at about 15 psi here and then nice gentle strokes and lay down paint. Now it is a primer coat so it doesn't matter if it's not perfect, it's just to give you the shade you need. You want to get the end of the part and underneath. That's it. So you can see in the reflection a nice even cut layer of paint on it. And it's dead easy, dead quick. So now the big thing to remember when you're spraying is protecting your breathing. So although you can't see it, I do have a P3 rated uh, breathing mask on, and P3 being the level of protection you need to stop the paint particles getting down into your lung and causing you problems. Usually. I have a, an extractor booth running, uh, but admittedly tonight where I live it's quite windy, so it's drawing the paint out of the kitchen nicely. So you want to come in from all angles, and you see the reflection there, you want to get a nice layer of paint over it. You also need to put the compressor back on, otherwise we're not going to get finished because it's starting to lose its pressure. So if you just bear with me and bear with the noise, the compressor's just going to go back on. There we go.
Right. So, onto the chassis. So, we want to get in all under the side. And we change the angle. We want to do the whole underside of the chassis. We don't want to be coming back to paint this again. There we go. Change direction. Underneath the track guards, and then I'll just switch on so we can change the sides, and same again here. Now, the beauty of using a 0.5 needle nozzle combination is you can get a good layer of paint down quite quickly so you minimise the amount of paint that's getting into the atmosphere Fine though. Now, wheels. Now, the beauty of having the wheels on the cocktail sticks is you can simply shoot colour at them. And that's it. Now, I'll try and get this because it's really difficult sometimes to see a dark colour being painted. And especially when the wheel draw falls off the holder. So, I start on the back of the wheel, spin it as I paint. There we go, done. And when you're using a 0.5 needle, you get enough paint down. You do it so quickly. It uh, doesn't take any time whatsoever. So start at the back and just turn as you paint. And that way you ensure you get every last nook and cranny. And obviously, once the paint's dried, you can always go back over any areas that you may have missed. So, spin it. And then, paint. And obviously, give yourself enough room to get the wheels back in. What I should have done is actually take all the wheels out in one go and then put them back in the holder starting in the middle and working to the outside so and that's just out of paint so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly finish off painting this and then we'll look at uh, we'll come back once all the undercoat's done and we'll look at start getting the cyanide grey on okay so we have finished the undercoat on the wheels so they're all nicely painted green uh, we've got all the reverse of the armor plate painted and we've got the underside the full underside of the hull painted now i have to say i don't know if the color you can see the color difference between the the raw plastic and the painted plastic and the nearest sort of um color I can compare this to would be uh, well, it's obviously German black green but it's quite similar to British uh, bronze green army bronze green so it's a lovely lovely deep tone of green which is just what we're wanting and it's going to help us get that nice um, shading in on the running gear now the next thing to do will be look at spraying 
the once they're dry, spraying the wheels of cyanide grey and spraying the spraying the hull um, cyanide grey as well. Now we're going to use. We've probably got enough paint in here to do a lot of it. I might mix some more up. So that will be a simple 50-50 mix, and then thin it down because there's not just a huge amount left in there. But whilst we're waiting for all this wheels on the other side of the hull to dry, then we can put down uh, maybe a, a touch of base colour on the tracks. Now, for, for the tracks, I'll use the 0.5 brush and I'll make my own mix up of track paint. So it's just a mix of leather brown, uh, whole red, uh, and a little bit of um, NATO black in there. If any of you ever watch um, Andy's Hobby Headquarters, he has a his own recipe for track paint, similar to this. It's yeah, you know, it's, it's red brown, a little bit of NATO black, and a little bit of uh, red. I think he puts in it. But basically, you can make up any colour you want to paint the tracks. Now we're we're lucky in the fact the tracks are already a nice uh, light rust colour, so it doesn't matter if we don't get them all completely covered. Um, it would be good to get a decent coat on them just so it gives um, a nice flat coat for the pigments and the oils to grip on and it will tone them down because they are kind of br uh, bright at the moment. But the time we've finished putting washes and pigments and, and dust effects on them and a little bit of um, pencil lead to get the shiny sort of worn metal look then it'll be fine. So I'm going to quickly paint the tracks because we'll need to put them back on once we've done the wheels. Um, and then by the time I've done that, the, the wheels and the hole should have dried and we'll start looking to do the cyanide grey. So we'll come back once everything's ready to go for the cyanide grey. Um, and then once we've done that, we'll paint the wheels whilst the cyanide grey is drying. And then we can look to actually putting it all together and getting ready to do the, the real painting and weathering on the top of the vehicle once we've finished constructing the side skirts back onto the hull. So, just see you in a moment. <laughs> 